the confidence that we have in him, August 1914. In 1 John 5, 14, 15, I read a very wonderful word. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. It is necessary that we find our bearings in this word. There is nothing that will bring to you such confidence as a life that is well pleasing to him. When Daniel's life pleased God, he could ask to be kept in the lion's den. But you cannot ask with confidence until there is a perfect union between you and God, as there was always perfect union between God and Jesus. The foundation is confidence in and fidelity to God. Some people think that Jesus wept because of the love that he had for Lazarus, but that could not be. Jesus knew that these people who were around the grave, and even Martha, had not come to the realisation that whatever he would ask of the Father, he would give him. Their unbelief brought brokenness and sadness to the heart of Jesus, and he wept because of this. The moment you pray, you find that the heavens are opened. If you have to wait for the heavens to be opened, something is wrong. I'll tell you what makes us lose the confidence is disobedience to God and his laws. Jesus said it was because of them who stood around that he prayed, but he knew that he heard him always. And because he knew that his father heard him always, he knew that the dead could come forth. There are times when there seems to be a stone wall in front of us, as black as midnight, and there is nothing left but confidence in God. There is no feeling. What you must do is to have fidelity and confidence to believe that he will not fail and cannot fail. We shall never get anywhere if we depend upon our feelings. There is something a thousand times better than feelings and it is the naked word of God. There is a divine revelation within you that came in when you were born from above and this is a real faith. To be born into the new kingdom is to be born into a new faith. Paul speaks of two classes of brethren, one of whom are obedient and the other disobedient. The obedient always obey God when he first speaks. It is the people of God that he will use to make the world know that there is a God. The just shall live by faith. You cannot talk about things which you have never experienced. It seems to me that God has a process of training us. You cannot take people into the depths of God unless you have been broken yourself. I have been broken and broken and broken. Praise God that he is near to them that are of a broken heart. You must have a brokenness to get into the depths of God. There is a rest of faith. There is a faith that rests in confidence on God. God's promises never fail. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, 17. The word of God can create a resistless faith, a faith that is never daunted, a faith that never gives up and never fails. We fail to realise the largeness of our Father's measure, and we forget that he has a measure that cannot be exhausted. It pleases him when we ask for most. How much more? It is the much more that God shows me. I see that God has a plan of healing. It is on the line of perfect confidence in him. The confidence comes not from our much speaking, but it comes because of our fellowship with him. There is a wonderful fellowship with Jesus. The chief thing is to be sure that we take time for communion with him. There is a communion with Jesus that is life, and that is better than preaching. If God tells you definitely to do anything, do it, but be sure it is God that tells you. I used to work with a man who had been a Baptist minister for 20 years. He was one of the sweetest souls I ever met. He was getting to be an old man, and I used to walk by his side and listen to his instruction. God made the word in his hand as a two-edged sword to me. And I used to say, yes, Lord. If the sword ever comes to you, never straighten yourselves up against it, but let it pierce you. You must be yielded to the word of God. The word will work out love in our hearts. And when practical love is in our hearts, there is no room to vaunt ourselves. We see ourselves as nothing when we get lost in this divine love. This man of God used to prune and prune me with the sword of God and it is just as sweet to me today as it was then. I praise God for the sword that cuts us and for a tender conscience. Oh, for that sweetness of fellowship with Jesus 
that when you hurt a brother by word or act, you could never let it rest until you make it right. First, we need to be converted and to become as little children, and to have the hard heart taken away, to have a heart that is broken and melted with the love of God. And the man of whom I have been speaking came to me and said, The doctor says that this is the last day that my wife has to live. I said, Oh, Mr. C, why don't you believe God? He replied, I have looked at you when you talked and have wept, and said, Father, if you could give me this confidence, I would be so happy. I said, Could you trust God? I felt that the Lord would heal her. I sent to a man and asked if he would come with me to a dying woman, and I believed that if two of us would go and anoint her according to James 5, 14, 15, she would be raised up. This man said, Oh, why do you come to me? I could not believe. Although I believed the Lord would be sure to heal her, if you would go. Then I sent to another man and asked him to go with me and told him that whatever his impression was, to be sure to go on and pray right through. We entered the house. I asked this man to pray first. He cried in his desperation and prayed that this man might be comforted after he was left with these little motherless children and that he might be strengthened to bear his sorrow. I could hardly wait until he had finished. My whole being was moved, I thought. What an awful thing to bring this man all this way, to pray that kind of a prayer. What was the matter with him? He was looking at the dying woman instead of looking at God. You can never pray the prayer of faith if you look at the person who is needing it. There is only one place to look, and that is to Jesus. The Lord wants to help us this afternoon to learn this truth and to keep our eyes on him. When this man had finished, I said to Mr. C, Now you pray. He took up the thread where the other man left off and went on with the same kind of prayer. He got so down beneath the burden, I thought he would never rise again, and I was glad when he got through. I could not have borne it much longer. It all seemed the most out of order of anything I ever heard. My soul was stirred. I was anxious for God to get a chance to do something and to have his way. I did not wait to pray, but rushed up to the bed and tipped up the oil bottle, pouring nearly the whole contents on the woman, and I saw Jesus just above the bed with the sweetest smile on his face. And I said to her, Woman, Jesus Christ makes you whole. And she was not only healed, but was raised up in that very hour. Oh, beloved, may God help us this afternoon to get our eyes off the conditions and symptoms, no matter how bad they may be, and get them fastened upon him, and then we shall be able to pray the prayer of faith.